In a world more interconnected than ever before, where data is the lifeblood of innovation, there exists a technology that's quietly been shaping our digital future. LoRaWAN, or Long Range Wide Area Network, is a transformative force in the Internet of Things market. In an era where everything seems smart, LoRaWAN takes the stage as a cornerstone technology underpinning the Internet of Things revolution. In this documentary, we invite you to join us on a journey through the present, not the distant future or the bygone past. LoRaWAN is not just a technology, it's a promise fulfilled. This film focuses on several exciting use cases by companies that employed the true potential of the LoRaWAN technology, transforming businesses and paving a way for a more sustainable, efficient and secure future. EcoStar Mobile, who have merged satellite technology with LoRaWAN to extend connectivity beyond boundaries. Curlink, with their commitment to building the foundations of LoRaWAN infrastructure. Deutsche Bahn, driving smart transportation solutions that enhance the travel experience. Thermocon and M Climate, pushing the envelope in building automation through LoRaWAN. Connexing, shaping the smart cities of tomorrow. And APIC, bringing IoT integration to new heights, making complex solutions more accessible. I'm Dean Marsh, IoT Solutions Architect at Connexin in the United Kingdom. I'm Lyubov Yanchev and I'm CEO of M Climate. I founded the company almost uh, nine years ago. I'm Marcello Gogozza, I'm Senior Product Manager of EcoStar Mobile. My name is Mario Schröder, I work for the company Thermocom. Thermocon is an expert in sensor technologies for more than 35 years. My name is Martin Kemper, working for DB Systel. DB Systel is the internal IT provider, digital partner of the Deutsche Bahn. And our team uh, is providing LoRaWAN connectivity solutions for the needs of the Deutsche Bahn. So I'm Jan Baudouin, I'm the sales director of Kerlink. Kerlink is a company which was founded in 2005. We focus on gateway design and we manufacture gateways, LoRaWAN gateways. I'm uh, Nicolas Sornin. I'm, uh, I used to be one of the uh, co-inventors of uh, the LoRa technology uh, more than 10 years ago now. I had an active role during nearly 10 years uh, in this ecosystem. I left Semtech uh, three years ago now uh, to create a company called uh, Apic that I'm representing today. I've been in the IT scene for over 20 years now. I've used many different IoT technologies. LoRaWAN really enabled data capture from anywhere without using cables. It really opened up that avenue to capture whatever you want from anywhere. So for me, when I first discovered LoRaWAN about five, six years ago, it opened up all these new possibilities and we were able to turn um, ideas into reality very quickly. We see a lot of co competition in the IoT landscape and I see LoRaWAN as a key technology so when you have a look at the cross rates over the last years and you see also the connected devices on the Think stack, so it's 1.5 million. So the trend for LoRaWAN technology is great. I guess this is a key technology in the IoT market for the next years. Uh, essentially, a lot of the connectivity complexity, although LoRaWAN is quite complex and flexible, you know, to the customer, a lot of those issues were just solved by LoRaWAN. Another super important thing is that we unlocked the use case to use batteries. Because previously on Wi-Fi, we had only the option of constant power supply. And this, in turn, unlocked a, uh, a lot of use cases for us in terms of products, offerings. We think that uh, this is a one of key technology where we are point out. And uh, we think that with this technology, we can help the ecosystem to have the massive IoT deployment with satellite and not only with terrestrial, as happened today. So the highlights of our product is that we have 35 years experience in the sensors. So we know what we are doing, we can all the uh, sources of deviation a sensor can have, we can counteract that. And we trust in our sensors, we, gave, we provide five years warranty of all our sensors. And with our knowledge in the building automation market, we can help IoT companies to set up a building, a hotel, a room in the best condition so that they are best equipped. And APIC is actually um, in the business of doing safety tracker for outdoor professionals or outdoor sport enthusiasts. So we do recognized trackers that can be recovered in any situation, any environment when people need assistance. 
that's an example of uh, what we do, of the tracker we're doing. And so this is simply basically a badge you wear on you and you just forget about it until you actually need it. This is a big SOS button. And once you press that SOS button, uh, cavalry will come and, and, and get you out of trouble. Our solutions are divided uh, in four categories. One is energy efficiency. This is primarily done by controlling the HVAC systems. It might be radiators, it might be fan coal units, it might be gas boilers, it might be split air conditioners. So we have solutions for all of those. Then the second solution is air quality, which became super relevant, especially around COVID. So there we have uh, three sensors. Uh, one of it is on batteries, just a white box with a button and a light, uh, alarming you whether the CO2 is in good level. The other two sensors are quite new. Um, they're both with e-ink displays and solar power. So this is something else that Laura One brought to the table, you know, just the low consumption. And now with the solar kind of innovation, um, solar panels that are tuned to work well with indoor lights, all of a sudden you don't need batteries at all. So we have two sensors, one is um, with a PIR and the, the other one is without a PIR. The one with PIR, since it was the first one, we actually added space for batteries. But now that we're so confident in the solar uh, power generation, uh, the second version uh, does not have any option for batteries because we know it works uh, just with the indoor lights. The third solution that we have, it's about water. It's about controlling water, whether it is uh, in case of, uh, let's say, a flood. So you need to turn off the water supply or in case of, let's say, prepaid billing, uh, which is very le relevant in some countries. People b essentially purchase a ticket for, let's say, 20 euro of water. And uh, when it finishes, we, we have a valve which can stop the water. The other solution in the water um, category, it's a flood sensor. So it's a flood sensor that is placed on the, um, on the floor. And if it senses flood, it immediately uh, alarms. Also the valve, it can immediately stop the water. But in most cases, people, um, you know, it's easier for them to just uh, place the flood sensors around the building and decrease the cost of a flooding. What's interesting about this solution is that it's mostly purchased by companies and clients that already had issues with flooding because they know how expensive it can be to, you know, recover the building. The fourth solution that we have, it's, um, it's about automation. So we have a door and window sensor and we also have a multi-purpose button. The multi-purpose button can be used for you know anything. It just sends an uplink when it's pressed. So you can put a sticker with, uh, let's say, uh, a waiter or a bill. You can put a sticker with, uh, I don't know, maybe um, some, some warning. Um, it has a lot of use cases. As we journey deeper into the heart of Lorawan, we uncover one of the most remarkable attributes, scalability. LoRaWAN technology can handle a massive number of devices, all transmitting data without congestion. This is key to its success. In densely populated urban areas, LoRaWAN allows for smart infrastructure on a massive scale. Streetlights, waste management, traffic systems, all managed seamlessly. In rural settings, it's the backbone of precision agriculture connecting sensors across vast expanses, optimizing yields without compromise. And in healthcare, it's the lifeline for wearable devices and patient monitoring systems, providing quality care for all. The beauty of LoRaWAN lies in its ability to grow with our needs. It's the bedrock of future innovation, ready to scale to meet any challenge. So how do you achieve scalability? I think scalability in IoT frameworks is very important and when you talk about scalability in IT, you will have to talk about cloud. And Deutsche Bahn is pushing a cloud-first approach uh, since a couple of years. And that's very important for us to scale with IT to provide services of today and tomorrow. And I think LoRaWAN really fits best to that, and especially the, the Sync stack. And we have deployed the Sync stack in our own cloud infrastructure, so it's highly available and really highly scalable. And that's important for us uh, for future services. As a gateway manu manufacturer, uh, the point is that we uh, promote the idea that uh, the scalability comes from the possibility to have a good maintainability of the network. 
uh, we believe that if maintainability fails, you cannot scale your project. So that means that if you just deploy one, two, three gateways, it's okay, you can, it's easy, I mean, to maintain. But if you come to larger deployments, then you need to have a professional way to administrate, monitor, update your, your, your network. From my point of view, the scarcity comes from there, especially that uh, for the devices, number of devices, uh, you need to have more and more gateways and to densify your network to access these devices. So if you add devices, you add gateways, and so you need more uh, maintainability and mainten uh, maintenance services on, on that. The choice of LoRaWAN was kind of obvious for that tracker. So because of the constraint of the device, it needs to last a week on a fairly small battery while transmitting uh, frequently. And more important, uh, we have to operate in totally uh, white areas, meaning with no cellular connectivity, no kind of connectivity before. So in many cases, we have had to deploy our own connectivity uh, in the ski resort or around the mountains where we want to operate. For us, we're not Orange or KPN. We cannot go and deploy cellular or ask them to deploy cellular because there's no customer there. They will never do it. However, using LoRaWAN, we were able very cheap and quite easily to put the gateways we needed and operate them, them ourselves to provide coverage in the areas of interest for us. So basically, LoRaWAN gave us the power to build a network where we need it, when we need it for our devices and our application. We are a product company. What we do best is create, perfect and manufacture products. And we don't want to go to the end consumers. And I think this is another thing that Lotto One kind of um, enforces. It's like the collaboration between companies. Our motto is that we work with partners. We never go to install sensors or commission a site. Sometimes we go on the first commissioning of a partner so that you know we can have engineers there and just have a, an extra assurance. But essentially we have a network of partners um, that either purchase from us or from through distributors in some countries. And those partners are anywhere from you know, a simple system integrator, but maybe a facility manager, energy efficiency company, maybe a telecom, maybe a utility. We have all those. Our trackers can now roam nearly anywhere in uh, Europe using the, uh, wherever there is TTN coverage. And that's um, quite a big change, brilliant. We started at the very beginning on the machine-to-machine -machine systems uh, in transportation with uh, Linux-based gateways. And uh, now in 2023, and this is maybe six to seven years from now, we have completely migrated uh, our portfolio to LoRaWAN. So yeah, what, today this is 100% LoRaWAN. In the history, we have been uh, seen as a very leader in the in the gateways, uh, uh, providing solutions to the main telcos, main carriers uh, uh, in Europe and even in some uh, some many countries. We uh, especially deployed the networks for Proximus, KPN, Orange, and also uh, Tata Communication in India, for example. These are major deployments by uh, by uh, big telcos. And today, um, the picture has uh, smoothly changed and we uh, are now deploying private networks for companies who address this vertical. And we are very proud of many partnerships uh, on this market that is now a little bit more fragmented than previously, but uh, uh, largely successful. So currently we have a lot of interesting use cases. So these are covered not only by, let me say, human behavior, because we can have, for example, the both monitoring because for the car we have everything under tracking because he's using the terrestrial technology but if we go in maritime of course there is no coverage and we can enable this kind of thinking to trace your boats to trace the voltage so if you have any issue you can get this information real time and can be safe or can be also application like more for environmental monitoring like detection of a wildfire so we can save uh, this kind of risk and issue in real time, getting the information from the tree in remote area without an issue. I have many, many uh, different examples uh, of successful projects. It's, it's hard to pinpoint one. I'd say one that was uh, particularly interesting was in Edinburgh. Uh, basically, all the schools there use our CO2 sensors, which is uh, quite nice. Another one is uh, basically from the product development uh, side. It's more about the new products that we develop with solar, 
which I think is super important because um, we cannot live on batteries forever. So this really made a difference this year, but also I believe it's going to have a long-term impact on both us and the industry. Keeping the infrastructure up and in uh, operating condition is a real challenge. We have a lot of gateways that are in very harsh environment uh, that uh, experience uh, power outages, connectivity outages, so keeping a network of uh, gateways up and running is a challenge. Uh, Damien, a, a guy in the team, is basically working on that. That's his job, to keep the thing uh, running and to go and repair and fix uh, gateways that are not uh, uh, working. There are always challenges, otherwise there is no business. So the first challenge that we have, at least in the IoT ecosystem, is the missing awareness that something new is feasible. So now we are fighting about this. But since our vision is to have the massive IoT deployment, we are trying to be convergence. So in order to enable this, we first of all tried the integration with the terrestrial player. So for this one of the announcement of this kind of conference was the integration with the TTI platform. This was uh, one of first steps for our vision. And we think that um, in this way, we try to help people to understand that some new and some innovation are real and not just marketing advertisement. Of course, to do this, uh, now we are working in order to involve a wide ecosystem in terms of device maker, in terms of IoT platform, in order to move from the world to the real case. And now also in the world of fame, there are four or five real concrete devices that can cover this use case. So yeah, implementation. We have a dedicated team of network planners. So with water utility companies, they have all the locations where the meters are intended. So they capture all that data, um, input it into their simulation tool, run that. That can take up to two weeks to do the simulation. So we know exactly where the gateways need to be placed for optimal efficiency to keep within the spread factors required for the SLAs. You know, working, for example, with Ying, this place um, has been something new for us. Working with uh, energy harvesting um, has been something new for us and quite challenging. For example, one of the products where you have the option for batteries, you also have the option for external power supply. So we had to combine three um, input uh, power sources into you know pretty sophisticated way of harvesting energy. The other kind of things are you know just typical for a hardware manufacturer. You know sometimes the factory does something wrong. You know they put uh, a another capacitor, let's say, or another resistor. So getting things off ground, you know, getting to this first manufacturing batch where everything is flawless, uh, it's hard and sometimes takes time. The last super funny thing is that um, the, our supplier of PCBs um, made a mistake and put another buzzer inside, which was two millimeters higher than the one. Uh, we told them, they sent us the, um, you know, the real buzzers, the ones that were supposed to be, we received them, we sent them to our factory in Bulgaria, and our factory in Bulgaria received um, hair clips. So the logistics partner basically mistake, mistook the, the, the package. Something unfor, you know, unforeseen that got us delayed by uh, at least three weeks. But um, at some point with the R&D, you stop having real problems. You transfer to a, to a place where you have more operational issues. Because at the end of the day, a hardware product consists of more than, a, more than 50 individual parts, more than and something can go wrong with any of those parts. So you gotta have the quality assurance systems in place that you make sure that you know what the customer receives at the end of the day is uh, what you have designed in the first place. The, the, the main challenges we, we, we met uh, is about the market itself. In the early steps, we started with major operators and the business model was based, was based on the typical uh, uh, telecom operator model, I mean, selling connectivity. After some years, what we could see is that uh, finally the success comes the uh, um, players who have a real business case behind and who have designed uh, their solution, taking into consideration the, the business model, the business plan they have at the early beginning. So the idea behind is that uh, a customer or a user um, who wants to deploy a network should first consider the full TCO of his network, uh, calculate the budget, calculate everything about, about the solution he needs, rather than uh, moving forward, straight forward to the coverage. I think that the, 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 the operators, private operators, I mean, uh, should take the time to calculate uh, the business plan, 
before uh, uh, starting to cover the, with LoRa one. This is a challenge because uh, not not doing that uh, leads to uh, to the failure at the end. Because uh, if you deploy a network with no use case, the impact on the ecosystem is quite bad. So that means that going that way, calculating the budgets, taking into consideration the robustness of the network is very, very important. If users, uh, operators, do some kind of compromise when starting the deployments, uh, lo lowering the level of gateways, lowering the level of the devices, the quality of the lower network server, finally it leads to the failure. It's much better, if possible, of course, in the, in the, in the business model, it's much better to invest on the solution, on the robustness of the solution, and then, of course, the the cost, the OPEX cost, I would say, uh, will decrease and it's much better for the, for the completion of the project over years. Often when you look at scalability, you look on the technology, but you also have to look on your processes. Does my processes scale uh, for, for an Internet of Things? And I think we have a very good example, one customer who deploys about more than 100 locations with LoRaWAN. From a technical point, that's very easy. You choose your right devices, you have your LoRaWAN coverage at the locations, you have a scalable backend, you have your integration into a data lake. But how to do the deployment with a distributed field organization, you will even not have the know-how in the field organization. So what we did, uh, we decided together with our customer to build a so-called onboarding app. So the technician on site is not skilled with LoRaWAN, he has his mobile app, he scans a QR code of a device and he scans a QR code of his assets and this onboarding app is doing the rest. So he will check does this device fits to the asset in this use case, then he will onboard the device on the network stack, he will check if there's a successful join, then he will configure the device for that use case and at the end all this onboarding information is sent to the data lake and this enables the customer also to roll out uh, larger footprints in a lot of locations in Germany. So looking at the rollout processes and how to optimize that is, is quite important. The customer's application fully integrates into Tematra. It's a seamless process. So when they add devices, water meters, it automatically publishes into, into TTI. So that's a, an important piece there. And the customers, they don't actually see that part in the background. It's all completely transparent and, and automated. Currently, the vision from people is that satellite is complex, satellite is expensive, satellite is difficult to collect the data. So in order to destroy this vision, what we are doing, we are doing um, for final customer to be transparent. So you can receive the data from terrestrial device and sensor. You can receive the same data from a satellite device. And then this data can be merged and flow in your existing platform, that can be TTI or some other way. This is without any closure environment. The problem is that in the past 20 years, this environment was not standard with closed protocol, closed platform. And this, of course, limited the, the use case and the massive deployment. We did work together with the things industry, I think, since five years now. And we experienced really a lot of help uh, from the things industry on our way to make LoRaWAN as a success story uh, at Deutsche Bahn. We were able to start small without a big front-end invest. It was open source, it was available to use. And then I think the open API approach, uh, open source approach and cloud-first approach of the things tech that really fits best into an IT infrastructure of, of Deutsche Bahn. In the ever-evolving landscape of IoT, it's not just the technology that matters, it's the partnerships and collaborations that shape the future. Hardware manufacturers are pushing the boundaries, developing devices that are not only reliable, but also energy efficient, making the IoT dream a reality. Meanwhile, software companies are crafting sophisticated platforms that harness the power of data, turning raw information into actionable insights. Together, they're building the smart cities of tomorrow, where LoRaWAN is the connective tissue that binds it all together. 
This is the state of the LoRaWAN market today. A dynamic and thriving ecosystem where hardware and software companies come together to shape our connected future. So the uh, ecosystem is, um, yeah, how, how to explain it? So most things in life are best when they are paired. For, for example, salt and pepper. And I, I see it as in the same way in the, in the lower one technology. Every company should focus on their expertise. So we are a hardware manufacturer. So this is our key competence. And we need to get uh, in contact with IoT solution provider who doing the connectivity, the dashboarding and the AI. So, and in that combination, we can serve the market with the best fit solution. We operate in a rough spot. Okay, there are many network providers, there are a ton of IoT platforms. To me, for example, the Things Industries is a super easy choice. We recommend it to all of our customers, simply because we know that our devices don't have issues with the Things Industries L1S. To us, it's easy when we find something that works well to recommend it to customers. And this is when it comes to L1S. We have integrations uh, with more than 15 uh, different L1S services. And with the IoT platforms, we help them, we give them advice, we give them free devices that they can integrate it into their IoT platform, because obviously this makes sense. It's about the no vendor lock-in. So what we do in, in Deutsche Bahn is DB Systel, we provide for all customers within the Deutsche Bahn a connectivity solution for LoRaWAN, so they can connect their own devices, get the data into, uh, into the cloud, and we do also uh, develop scalable services. So we have services in, in office buildings to make office buildings smart. We have services in, in maintenance plans. We have developed a known station clock talking LoRaWAN to, to the cloud infrastructure. So within Connexin, primarily, LoRaWAN is used for capturing data from water meters. So we're going from a manual process where the, where the existing customers capture data manually, um, typically drive by or walk by. So we completely automate that process by using LoRaWAN water meters, which send their data over the air. All that's captured, and that includes different diagnostics also, so leaks can be detected, backflow, and other areas as well. I see it as a key opportunity with the water utility companies to get the gateway infrastructure in. And because of the way the meters are installed in the UK below ground, we have to densify the gateway deployments. On the flip side, above ground, with our other applications, it allows plug and play. So for example, in, in Coventry, where we have hundreds of gateways, if we wanted to tackle um, sort of legal requirements with um, compliancy, we can just ship those applications out very quickly to authorities. The beauty uh, of my job is that uh, in one day, I can deal with uh, several different use cases. So the first thing to understand with LoRaWAN, is this is, let's say, internet-oriented protocol and you do not uh, remain uh, tight on a, on, a, on a vertical. So you can, in one day, experience with uh, water metering, with, uh, with uh, smart cities topics, with uh, smart parking, what, smart buildings. Well, I cannot stop, okay? What is promising uh, in my place of uh, um, gateway manufacturer um, is definitively, once again, the water metering aspect that is really growing fast. We can see also some adoption in smart agriculture very fast. This is very promising. What I can share is that the surprise can come uh, from time to time to unexpected uh, markets. The ecosystem is very mature now from what I see and from being in IT over 20 years, it seems at the moment one year is now sort of 10 years worth of development. You're seeing things happen really quickly. Um, all the standards are in place with the Laura Alliance, all the certification. We're at a, a place now where we know a sensor off the shelf, certified, it's gonna be reliable and it's, it's just gonna work and uh, deliver that data the customer expects. So according to our vision, so IoT will be a game changer. And this is already happened because we know that there is a lot of optimization in the projects for smart building, but also in industrial projects for industrial IoT. We think that uh, our help in order to change also this, uh, this perception can be done in the physical world. For this, we call this uh, smart country. And now the LoRaWAN is matched with the word LPWAN, that means low power 
uh, wide area network. But we can enable with satellite the LPGAN, that means low power global area network, because we can move from wide coverage, that is, let me say, a gateway coverage in terms of kilometer linked to a smart city, to a national or international coverage thanks to satellites. So this will help a lot to simplify the monitoring of everything you want. For example, a use case that could be useful in the past months that there is a lot of uh, uh, issue linked to climate change could be the monitoring of a river, the monitoring of a glacier. Because today there is no real-time monitoring of this kind of asset that can be done as now we are doing for industrial IoT, in the industrial process. Strictly speaking, it's not a LoRa one use case, but honestly, recovering people in snow from helicopters, from boats, from is not only exciting, it's, it's fun and useful. From everything I ever done and seen, frankly speaking, that's my, my preferred moment. It's a uh, yeah, very, very nice feeling to experience. We have one use case I would like to talk about that where LoRaWAN was really the game changer. So our customer, that's DB Energy, they are responsible to provide energy for the whole, whole Deutsche Bahn and they have tried for years to get the data out of these locations in the data lake uh, to better operate uh, those locations and all the process they tried was normally cable based and they didn't fit any uh, business case. And then LoRaVance was stepping by, we selected two partners to develop devices that can talk with Modbus with these assets. The devices are deployed in this location, LoRaVance is, cover is providing coverage and now they really have uh, their data uh, in the data lake and this will enable them to more get into predictive maintenance for, for these locations. And LoRaVan was really a game changer on that. I think there are a lot of really interesting developments this year. Like for example, the zero touch provisioning of gateways, I think that's super important, makes things easier, reduces the friction points. Another thing that happened fairly this year was also the solar panels. I think it's just the promise of not having batteries. It's super important. The thing is that if you invest into very high quality batteries, uh, those are expensive. And uh, at volume, the solar panels might be almost to the price where it matches the high quality batteries. But then the high quality batteries, you got to replace them in 10 years. So you got to send a person and the person going to uh, a property costs, let's say 50 euro per, per hour. And so the solar panels were, were something super, super interesting. Another thing that happened this year and has a, an amazing impact on the deployments is uh, the firmware upgrade over the air. I think that's essential. I cannot guarantee that you know, any device from the first firmware version is flawless. Uh, not only that, but I want to be able to you know, add more functionalities. So I think the Flota was uh, a real game changer in the Lotto One world. Ecostar is a, a corporation. Now we are Ecostar Mobile, that is the European, let me say, startup, because we are the innovation department of Ecostar. So we are in satellite business, legacy business, so MSS broadband business since uh, 50 years. Now we have this new vision of IoT. Our vision is a little different from what we see in the market in the past five years, that was just by calling satellites. So you have aggregation from sensor, and then you need a pipeline that is done with satellite. Instead, our vision now is because this is feasible thanks to technology and also LoRa technology that is one of these enabled to create a direct sensor to satellite. So you can plug in a sensor, whatever you want, and then this sensor communicates the data to satellite and then satellites flow this data to an IoT platform. So this can enable a lot of new cases that now is still not in place. What was really nice, we were able with the open source approach of the things, industries and with the community network, we were really enabled to start very small with a small team with a first idea born in a DB hackathon uh, and then we were able to, to scale with this solution and our vision is that really LoRaVan brings a lot of potential to drive digitalization within the Deutsche Bahn and so it will be a long way uh, to, to be there but we are on a good way to, to get there. 
Very simple. I live in Grenoble in the French Alps, right in the middle of the, you know, the best ski resort in the world, basically. Uh, so we knew there was interest uh, um, from those uh, ski resort operators to secure their, uh, their workers. They do you know, a lot of avalanche triggering, they go rescue people themselves. So they, op they often put themselves into dangerous uh, situations. You know, how should we architecture that device? How do we make the recovery system works? How do we test it? How do we, and likely, how do we train the, uh, the official uh, uh, recovery team? They need to know how to use our equipment. So I'm the one training those guys, for example. The future from Termocon in the IoT market or in the lower one market uh, is hopefully that we are a well-established company in the IoT market, that we are, have a huge awareness. Uh, everybody knows us at the lower one world what we are doing and uh, we get to come to the same expert level as we have in the ATRIC market. LoRaWAN, a technology that thrives on practical applications, reminds us that knowledge isn't merely acquired, it's forged through hands-on experience. Across diverse industries, experts and practitioners willingly share their insights, each a testament to the valuable learning points gained through hands-on work. The biggest learning, you're learning every day, we're kind of going into the unknown where people haven't really gone before, so there's no, a lot of the time at that scale, there's no references. It's challenging, but every day it, you, you're having to think on your feet and, and adapt and change and improvise and keep pushing ahead. So we're continually improving our processes. So the biggest learning in the last few months is that the market has grown rapidly. We have to create partnerships uh, to, to serve the market and to offer the best solution to our the end customers. That's the story. We have to find use cases. It's not the point that we talk about products or software solutions. We have to provide solutions which help our customers to save money, to be more sustainable and yeah, solve a problem. One major uh, learning and maybe also a recommendation for all who like to step into LoRaWAN, put the use case in the front. Don't build up a LoRaWAN network just for uh, having a network. Get your customers really early involved to understand what can LoRaWAN bring as a benefit into their day-to-day -day, uh, business. And you have to make up your mind about several things. Would you like to go with an open source approach or maybe with a Black box approach is an API first driven solution helping you to integrate all that uh, into your own infrastructure, into your own IT systems. What's about gateway management? Will that be important for you because you have your gateways maybe spread it all over Germany, but you have to uh, operate them remote? And once you have your answers to those questions, uh, I think there's a really good ecosystem, so select your partners and then start agile. My advice would be, so uh, there's, there's different factors in scaling. If you're manufacturing an end device, you have to scale at production. It's very different to build 100 devices than it is to build 100,000. Anybody starting in that area, there are now so many devices available out there that my number one recommendation would be do an extensive survey and if there is a device that you can use without having to invent it, do it. In the end, it's going to be far cheaper than to buy something that exists, even if it's more expensive than trying to develop your own uh, from, uh, from the ground up. Later on, once you're established and when you're selling, you can start really doing your own to, to lower your cost. That's a very frequent failure I've seen. Exactly uh, on the network server side, don't reinvent the wheel. It's tempting to just set up your own stuff and, and get it running yourself. Uh, however, I would really recommend going for you know, an established player uh, in that field and rent a solution at the beginning to get that out of your, you know, off your plate so you can really concentrate on your uh, business use case and not try to just have to patch everything all the time. In our case, just keeping the gateways running is a challenge enough that we don't want to worry about, you know, network server and, and, and back and things like this. For anybody that starts their journey now, I would say try to choose the right companies. Try to choose companies you vibe with. Try to choose companies that uh, have less kind of uh, touch points with you. So the better docu the documentation is, uh, the more information there is, the better.
try to stay local. Let's say you go to the US. If a US person starts with Lotto One right now, they better try to find you know, like-minded people, let's say distributors or hardware manufacturers that are in the US right now. Their manufacturing might be somewhere else, but at least they have a local office. Because uh, I feel like people often, um, they don't see the hidden requirements of actually working with you know, an abroad company. Uh, the different time zones, the certification, the duties, uh, not the duties, yeah, the duties of an importer, for example. The best advice is find companies that have good documentation, don't require you to have a lot of touch points with them, but rather have automated things and just people you vibe with, you know, solutions that you feel excited about. In some uh, use cases, LoRaWAN is definitely the good solution. If I take the example of water metering, uh, clearly uh, LoRaWAN and NBIoT are the two possible solutions that are really exist today and even though uh, one has some, some kind of advantages. My advice to a hardware company which starts new in the lower one world is uh, to do the market study first, to be focused on a specific topic, to so bring an impact, a positive impact to the lower one world and to the ecosystem. Just, just get stuck in, don't be scared. You're going to see problems and issues and that's all part and parcel of it. You're innovating, you're, you're doing things people haven't done before and you, you know, you're in that position now to sort of shape the future. I find it extremely exciting. In the ever-evolving landscape of IoT and LoRaWAN, easy implementation and scalability are not solitary achievements. They are the outcomes of collaboration. Consider the fusion of satellite technology with LoRaWAN bringing connectivity to the most remote corners of the world. Hardware companies and integrators create seamless solutions that bridge the gap between hardware and software, simplifying complex IoT implementations. In the world of LoRaWAN, it's not just about technology. It's about the shared vision of a connected future, where problems are addressed, solutions are implemented, and communities are empowered Collaboration is not just an option, it's the key to unlocking the full potential of this transformative technology. LoRaWAN is probably not the best technology out there, it's not necessarily the cheapest uh, one to deploy, but clearly uh, its strength is that so many people are now uh, accustomed to it and you know, getting used to it and know how to use it, that I think there is a real strength in that collective movement. Uh, LoRaWAN is in a state where it's going to be hard to displace and replace, you know, overnight by, uh, by something else. I'm quite confident that's going to last a little bit now.